the fifth president of the United States, James Monroe, like three of his four predecessors, was born to a Virginia slaveholding family. In his life, Monroe enslaved around 250 people. Yet, Monroe described slavery as one of the evils still remaining and wrote and spoke about emancipation, not all at once, of course, but gradual emancipation. Monroe stated that freeing all enslaved people at once would disrupt the social and economic order of things. Order of things? Was Monroe fearful that a free African-American population would seek revenge? Probably. A series of events in 1800, while Monroe served as governor of Virginia, certainly may have stoked his uneasy feelings about living alongside a free black population. The Virginia farm of Thomas Prosser was home to an enslaved blacksmith named Gabriel. In 1799, while Governor Monroe dined in his Richmond mansion, Gabriel and his brother were so driven by hunger that they attempted to steal a neighbor's hog. That neighbor happened to be white, and the two brothers happened to get caught in the act. The neighbor tore into Gabriel and began beating him. As an enslaved man in 1800, Gabriel was expected to take and accept the beating. He did not. Standing over six feet, and better than 200 pounds, Gabriel wouldn't have it. He beat the man to the ground and bit off part of his ear for good measure. Now, assaulting a white man in any way was never tolerated. But somehow Gabriel, being a valued metal worker, was allowed to avoid the mandatory death penalty if he chose to recite Bible passages and submit to a public whipping. The bloody and severe public whipping was supposed to break Gabriel's spirit. Instead, it lit a fire deep inside. Within a year, Gabriel organized and planned a revolt against all Virginia slave owners. He'd wage a war on slavery itself. Gabriel recruited hundreds if not thousands of enslaved people for his plot. The plan was to sweep through Richmond area plantations and form a fighting force large enough to burst into the state capital of Richmond, Virginia. Once in the city, Gabriel's army would splinter into three groups. One would begin setting the city ablaze. Another group would capture the guns at the city's weapons armory while the third group, headed by Gabriel himself, would head to the capital and kidnap the governor, none other than James Monroe. Now let's go get that the night the plot was to be hatched, a torrential rainstorm slammed Southern Virginia, flooding roads, washing out bridges, and dampening Gabriel's plans. His revolution would have to wait. But Gabriel's war to end slavery was not to be as two enslaved men, Pharaoh and Tom, spilled every bit of Gabriel's plan to their master. Governor Monroe put the Virginia militia on alert and offered a reward to capture Gabriel. By that time, Gabriel had already slipped into a Virginia swamp attempting to avoid capture. He found his way to a boat with a sympathetic captain that was heading to Tidewater, Virginia and away from Richmond. But Gabriel would be betrayed by a fellow enslaved man once again and was finally captured. At the direction of James Monroe, Gabriel's conspirators were rounded up. Those with minor roles were whipped and branded Others deemed leaders were sentenced to die. Among them, General Gabriel. Before his execution, 
Gabriel was allowed one final request. He requested that he not be executed alone, but with his fellow revolutionaries. Virginia said yes to this request. And on the day of Gabriel's execution, he walked up the steps of the scaffold, looked around, and saw there were no others. He'd face death alone to a backdrop of angry spectators. After Gabriel's execution, 26 others were likewise put to death. Dozens more faced the same fate. Finally, after much deliberation with Thomas Jefferson, Monroe decided to do the unthinkable. He showed them mercy and freed them, hoping and praying a clear message had already been sent to all enslaved people who dared to love freedom as much as Gabriel. Perhaps this story of Gabriel's daring would-be rebellion helps to explain, at least in part, why President Monroe did not favor immediate freedom for enslaved people. And while he did favor the removal of free African Americans from the United States, he pushed for their relocation to Liberia, West Africa. And to this day, the capital of Liberia is Monrovia, still bearing the name of President James Monroe. When legal emancipation finally arrived, nearly 100 years after the birth of the United States, that revenge, that wrathful vengeance, long feared by those early presidents, never came. Instead, African Americans simply took a tight hold of emancipation, freedom in its most fickle form, and settled in, trying to make a way out of no way. <laughs>